But now, uh, Sarath, which is the, the, the Dark Elf, he speaks in common. And he tells everybody that uh, they just happen to luckily stumble upon you. Now, I'm, I'm going to unlock your tokens as well, so you guys can kind of move freely. And then, oh, poor little stool, he runs right in. Bloop, 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 bloop. Kerry's gonna turn to Shushar and uh, tell him in Undercommon, like, didn't I tell you we were gonna protect you? You weren't hurt one bit. <laughs> that makes all the sense to make it to Dark Lake. We have grand celebration. <laughs> Wait till Blue find out. You beat Rook. <laughs> the Rook. Blue. <laughs> Yes, I really do hope we get a grand celebration for our journeys. Hopefully. And adventures. You know, he kind of shrugs. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. So, what are you guys? Uh, what are you guys doing? You know, these guys are kind of on one side, and you, know, you guys are kind of have, having a little little face off, and and Sarah comes comes forward and and says, uh, "I thought that we were all going to leave together." And then First you know I about that plan. Uh, well if you remember uh, I told you that I would be willing to leave with you I think you asked all of us that that question if I'm not mistaken and then when all hell goes break you know goes breaking loose and you know the demons are attacking my fellow Ken the Drow you guys are gone and the Kuatoa and then I look around and and there's Jim Jar unconscious. So, uh, thankfully, we got Jim Jar up, and, and Jim Jar is a very, uh, very powerful ally to have. We we did have to fend off several of the Drow scouts that were tracking us. Uh, so, the, the Drow were behind you, and thankfully for us, we found the Drow. But, several have fled, and there are more on their way. And I'm sure uh, the Priestess... I'm sure she is on her way. Ilvara with her stooges, Jorlin. Oh, and by the way, if you guys didn't know, Jorlin is her ex-lover. That kind of makes a little sense. But uh, he, look, uh, he looks at uh, Zayoth and goes, What did Jim Jaw ask you to pay him for him his help for y'all escaping? Because he wanted money and gold from us to not shout out and let the drow know that uh, we were leaving. That's why we tied him up. Well, and seeing also, that's... when we went to the arm, when we went to the armory, y'all didn't follow. Y'all went down the other tunnel. Well, if we didn't see where you went. To number one, you guys were out of there uh, quicker, as I say, as you humans say, on the top of the surface up there. I think you guys say that you were out of there like a a fly on poop. On cow poop, if if uh, sorry, you know I'm not a top dweller, so I really don't understand these these sayings as as you all say. But uh, yeah, we were trying to find you, and we saw that uh, old Jim Jar here was wounded, and he was suffering from the drow poison that my uh, that my people make. So I restored him back to consciousness. Uh, he as we were leaving, uh, he alerted us that. You know, you guys basically made him go unconscious. Uh, he mentioned nothing about, uh, you know, looking for any kind of payment or, or compensation. But uh, to no avail, uh, Jim Jar is a, is a powerful ally to have down here. And now that we're all together, we are one big happy family once again. Oh, and yeah, by the way... Aren't you missing a few? Ilva uh, yes, the, 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 the dwarf... Uh, she'll probably be catching up. Dwarves can only run so fast, you see. They have these short, stubby little legs. Uh, but as for Stoop... Yeah, you know, I kind of know. So you know what? I was with them, mm -hmm. and I'm a dwarf. With my stubby little legs, I could keep up. <laughs> he, he, just, he just kind of chuckles, and he says, Ah! So you must have been traveling slower than us. And this is just one, you know, Edith, uh, she starts to, uh, she's huffing and puffing and, you know, breathing hard. And she, 
You know, she runs into the area where everybody's at. Ah, 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 ah. I, I told you guys to wait up! And, she, you know, she's, she's right here. I, I told everyone to wait up. But then Sarath also says, And a few of us were not fortunate to make it out. You see, Ront, he was captured. He never made it out of Velkenvelve. And then the prince, that uh, hideous-looking Quagoth, he too was also captured with Ront. But to everybody else, we made it out. So like I said, once again, we're one big happy family. And as he goes over to uh, Stool, and you can hear Stool kind of go, uh-oh, and he takes Stool and sets Stool up on his, on his shoulder like uh, he's going to be carrying him. Thanks again, Zanark. Uh, I voted for Saxon, well, Kuiper. Thanks, guys, for all the follows. Appreciate it. Totally appreciate it. Or the drow. Or that. But uh, either, uh, Brother Echo kind of walks up and uh, picks up his torch and kind of uh, makes the flame dimmer down again. So it's just enough for him to see where he'll be able to keep moving without uh, tripping and falling on his face. We should probably get out of this cave since we've been making quite a bit of noise and maybe find another area to rest up a little bit. I know some of us are pretty beat up from that fight. We could sure use a rest. Yeah, sure thing. You know, you can. Uh, you guys were coming from from south, going north, so you guys can uh, continue to to travel north if you'd like. Oh yeah. my god, there's a double ganger of Eldith. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we'll go ahead and we'll uh we'll go ahead and we'll we'll close this map. So everybody is is now one one big happy family, right? Or of course. or so everybody well, at least one of us is not happy. Or, or so the everybody thinks, right? There's hard. always one in every family. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's uh let's open up this. Uh, you guys are you know you guys are actually pretty pretty banged up from that Vrock too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think just about uh just about everybody's a uh, a little wounded. Looks like uh Echo's a little wounded, Morvine's a little wounded, Al not much though. But yeah, you guys you guys actually used a lot of resources. You guys used a lot of magic. That uh. You guys used all your key, all that good stuff. Yeah, I, I want to really need a rest somewhere. I want to ask uh, Kara to ask uh, Shushar how far we are from Sloob now. <laughs> he turns to Kara and says, "About another, about another day and a half, about another day and a half's travel." So we should probably rest now then, instead of trying to make it the. Last stretch. See you, damn the luck. Thanks for stopping by, man. Now I'm gonna lease a little bit out of this area. As if we encountered a creature like that already, there's no telling what's up ahead. Yeah. Uh, Kara's gonna ask Chushar if he knows of some place to rest along the way that's safer than maybe where we are now. Or any of the others. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, with a with a little help of maybe the ranger, he says if if we travel at a if we travel at a, a slow pace, we should be able to find a uh, we should be able to find a pretty clear pathing, or a pretty clear path to to find a, another place or maybe a cave that that we can stay in for the night and and rest up. Oh, even and then he goes on to saying, oh, even I need to rest. It is it is very tiresome to watch people fight. It is so stressful. All that shit as he's blah, 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 blah. Uh, Oh, you don't know what he's saying, <laughs> but he's <laughs> But I know what you're saying. You wanna say that to me, you little mother effer. <laughs> I love Kira it. Kira disagrees with him. And then tells the other where he's pointing at or where they're supposed to be going. <clears throat> Okay, so why don't we go ahead and 
take our break. I can't believe it's already six, almost 6.40. Let's take a, a quick 10-minute break. I'll be back at uh, 6.47, and we'll continue. So get up, stretch, grab a, a frosty beverage. or So what say you guys? Go to the buyer. There's, a, you guys in 10 there's a pretty big party now. There is a there is a huge party in the house. Yes. Thanks, crazy. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, crazy. Thanks so much, man. Uh oh. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You guys didn't think there'd be 12 people in this party, did you? <laughs> I didn't know there was going to be 12 in this party either till early this morning. You know, I just wanted to make sure I utilized all of these NPCs in some way or another. Mm. All right, so, you know, uh, old... Oh, man, so many people in here. I'm, I'm looking at this, uh, this turn order just... Actually, there's 13 people. I'm just looking at it uh, in amazement. But Shushar, you know, uh, says that uh, you can travel east more, uh, northeast, and uh, with the help of, of Al, of course. So, Al, why don't you give me a uh, give me a survival check? Let's see if you can navigate your way through these these subterranean caverns. Nice, 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 uh, nice clutch roll, man. So yeah, you guys are uh, no problem at all. You guys find a nice cave uh, up on the side of an embankment. It's a little, it's a little tight fitting up there for 13 people. Well, really 12 and a half, I guess. I guess kind of stool would count for maybe half, but yeah. But you guys get up there. You guys can, uh, you know, get back in and, and build a fire. Actually, have something good to eat. So I want everybody to go ahead and deduct one day's rations from their character sheet. I know some of you had ten, some of you had three, some of you had five days. So you guys are now eating. This is your first time you've been able to actually have some pretty nice uh, meals. A um, couple of the others, Topsy and Turvy, um, they go out uh, with a, a boopy dough. They go out, savage some things, forge some things, and bring enough back for uh, the others, you know, with Eldith and, and um, Jim Jar. So that everybody's able to, uh, everybody's able to eat. So it's, a, it's sort of like a, a very eerie quiet, you know, between you guys... And the others, like Bupito and Sarath and, and Eldith and Stool and Jim Jar, Topsy Turvy, how you guys kind of left them there. They, they feel that, you know, they, they kind of feel that uh, you left them there. Well, I can't communicate with them. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's honestly, what they're saying to, to k I don't ever making that decision that they were all coming with us because they all just kind of ran off on their own. Yeah, yeah, they were trying to. Uh, they were gathering up weapons and taking, okay. uh, getting armor and whatnot. Well, as Ida said, if they were paying attention, not going all willy nilly all over the place, they would have been able to keep up. <clears throat> poor, poor Eldith. <laughs> Wait up for me. No, and she doesn't even have a beard. No, she doesn't. She's uh, she's she's clean shaven. Hey Dave, I yes. have the uh, the wander uh, feature from my uh, I guess it's my background or whatever, and it allows me to uh, like forage up enough food and water for me and up to five other people every day. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also have the natural explorer, which lets me find double that I, what I normally would when I forage. So if if we run low on food or anything, then I can pretty much scrounge around and find enough for everybody, so we don't yeah absolutely have to waste our rations or whatever. Yeah, well, that's 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 up to to you guys, and I'm I'm glad I'm glad that uh glad that you brought that up. So uh, I'll I'll give you the choice. I mean, do you want to, to eat what I forage up? Okay, so uh, 
you'll have to do a, a, a nature check, well, a survival check to, to forge. But seeing that you guys were kind of uh, traveling at a, at a normal pace, we'll say that there's no types of penalties. Uh, so go ahead and give me a check. I'm not sure. Does, does Explorer give you advantage on that or, or what? I can't, I can't remember. I try to uh, remember everything in 5e, but it's just impossible. Yeah, it just says when you forage, you find twice as much food as you normally would. Okay, so the, okay, yeah, that's that's fine. And then the other one, the wanderer says, uh, uh, you can find food and fresh water for yourself and up to five others per day. So it'd be up to ten others. So, yeah, that's what you're. Yeah, so go ahead and give me a uh, give me a forge roll, and we'll see uh, we'll see how it goes. Because I've so got survival, I've got you said? that is uh, survival. It is. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you, you easily. I mean, just right around the the corner of the cave, you find a uh, a couple more of these tall lichens, and you can, and you can just you know take a uh, take the meat. You find enough meat for ten people, enough water for ten people. Uh, so you bring this back to the camp as well. And uh, topsy turvy, they they found an, enough, but they would have probably still been a little hungry. So you guys have enough to to share between. All of you and with the others as well. Detroit, maybe I don't know if you guys are going to share it or not, but but you have. I'll share. Ten people, you know, ten ten people yeah, with I food. Would share mine. Yeah. Actually, twelve, because you have uh, you also have a shoe shower with you as well, so it'll double that. And it'll be twelve. So yeah, you guys can can actually share, and and it kind of breaks the tension a little bit, you know. Bepito, he thanks you. You know, Sarah thanks you, Elda thanks you, kind of snuggles up besides old Edith there. You know, it's being a, you know, she's the only, she's not the only dwarf anymore. Stool's kind of like in the corner, kind of just sitting there, sitting there shivering. And, you know, every time the, the dark elf moves, he kind of shimmies around the opposite way of the dark elf. And then uh, Jim Jar, he's just sitting there quiet, really not saying a whole lot. And then Topsy and Turby, they're kind of rustling around with one another after they've ate. So, what's going on? You guys are all sitting around this uh, fire that's blazing, that's that's big enough for everyone. All of you guys sitting on one side, all all of the other captives that uh, met you and helped you with the Vrock, they're on the other side. Did any of them take uh, damage during that fight with the Vrock? No, actually none of them took any damage. Okay. Mm-mm. No, but e- uh, Eldith came in a little bit, a uh, little bit late, but she was all winded. Her her stubby little legs just couldn't uh, keep up with everyone else. Uh, Brother Eco kind of goes, uh, sits a little bit away from the fire, and kind of just like sits cross-legged, like Indian style, and he mm-hmm. just kind of starts like meditating. Okay, yeah, because you need uh, everybody's going to need six hours of rest to get. Uh, any kind of you know spell slots used? Any kind of actually, mine's only thirty minutes. Yeah, mine's only yeah, four th- hours. Th- yeah. There are exceptions for the elves and and stuff like that, and for the monks. So, but I'm I'm just speaking in in general terms. Uh, so you guys, I mean, literally, I mean, you guys can have conversation. I mean, you still have another couple hours before watches are going to be need to need to be assigned because, like I said, you're in the underdark. There's a lot of foul creatures out there. And we're going to do, every time you guys do a rest, whether it be short rest or a long rest, we are going to do an encounter roll. So, all right. So what do you guys think? You know, everybody's kind of looking at each other. You know, the the tension's kind of been, you know, settled a little bit with, you know, Topsy and Turby. Every, you know, everybody's starting to, you know, jump in. And, and uh, Jim Jar kind of says slyly, you know, he as, as everybody's kind of joking and having... A fun time breaking bread and drinking. Jim Jar says, oh, so you guys got lucky that uh, we came and saved your hides at the time that we did. And, you know, when when he says that comment, a couple of the others, the other captains, just kind of look at him and just, you know, especially Turvy, she, she says, why don't you just drop it, Jim Jar? And uh, you know she she goes off the spell. I, I I really I honestly don't blame him in the first place. Now, one of the questions that I have because this was mm-hmm. this was an issue when we were all in the uh, when we were captives 
is that before like hardly anybody spoke common so i don't know who i could even talk to i know the the drow can speak common but he really didn't say much of anything when we were there um the conversation with jim jar was between uh, yeah. brother echo and him in gnomish mm -hmm. um so i didn't even know what that was that was about so i don't know who i would yeah. be able to communicate with they're basically communicating with kara everything is uh everything is in under common except for eldith she's speaking common and also I, Sarath, he can speak, he can I can speak common. Speak with the, uh, with the, I can speak with the deep gnomes. Jim okay. Jarn, you Tom speak Kennedy. gnome? Okay. Yeah, I, I speak uh, yeah, deep gnome. Yeah, J Jim Jar said that in, in gnomish, you know, basically pointed it towards Brother Echo. But of course, you know, Brother Echo, he, he's off in his trance. He's in, you know, in this state of nirvana over there. So then he kind of says something to uh, Kara. And, but you do hear him say that in No Michelle. You know, basically, you know, you're lucky we came along when we did because that Vrock probably would have killed all of you. Uh, Kira knows No Mish too, so I think mm -hmm. she would happily translate that to everyone who doesn't understand. <laughs> oh, okay. He just kind of well, looks he over at you. Know, but, you know, she can tell a tone from a mile away, and that's not good. <laughs> You know, you know the dark elf says, "Well, he does have a point. We did, we did kind of uh, turn the tide for you guys. I mean, there's no denying that. Facts are facts. Well, we weren't done yet. I mean, we still had some tricks up our sleeve. I mean, we appreciate the help, but it's not guaranteed that we would have needed it." Eldith said, If I could have only gotten there, I would have laid my weapons into this vicious, foul creature demon. I would have laid my weapons into its uh, armor. Well, I agree, and I, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy that you all showed up when you did. I'm after about there. like 20 minutes or so, uh, Brother Echo gets up, walks over, and he, in the tr in his little meditation, he kind of, after that Jim Jar said that kind of sly comment, he kind of like walks over and goes, just to kind of we call. I don't think you even touched the block, did you, Jim Jar? Oh, he did. Oh, he did. Yeah, he did. He did uh, quite a bit to it. Uh, so did, did Topsy. Crit? Yeah, he crit it. Yeah. Yeah, it was that last swing that missed completely. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did miss a. Uh, I think he missed one. Yeah, he too. quit, but he also critically failed too. Oh. There's a, <laughs> a couple failed their uh, attacks of opportunity, which is kind of funny. And Brother Echo kind of goes over, kind of like to mess with Stull, because it's something that he's never seen before. So he's just kind of like interested in what like what Stull is, and so he kind of just goes over and just tries to play with him. Uh, he kind of takes a takes a liking to you a little bit, and Just don't eat him. yeah, Sarah the uh, Sarah the the dark elf. He he looks over at you, uh, Echo, and says, uh, "I wouldn't get too acquainted with that uh, Mykonid if I was you. Uh, that is, he is still in my possession." Well, uh, since we're all kind of here in a party, can I not mess with him? Are you planning on leaving anytime soon? Oh well, I I am. Uh, planning on, well, that is uh, something else that we need to discuss, seeing that uh, we are a uh, pretty large group of individuals. I'm sure we all have our own agendas. I'm sure we have our own intentions, and I'm sure that we all have uh, the ways that we want to travel. So that is also something that uh, we need to get out into the open. But yes, uh, uh, the, the Mykonid will be coming with me. And he says that, and, and, and Stool kind of just like kind of shivers a little bit. And he goes, <laughs> Now is the, is, is he speaking common, the drow? Yeah, the drow is speaking common. So, he's been speaking so, common pretty much the whole time. Okay, so I want to ask him, the way you say he's your possession, does that mean he's your prisoner? Mm -hmm. uh, he, yes, he, he is my, he does belong to me, correct. In my society, if we conquer someone, uh, as you were conquered by Ilvara and her ex-lover, Jorlin, uh, yes, uh, you are in their possession. That is part of my heritage of being a drow. So we're no longer in their possession. 
Does that mean at some point he might not be in your possession anymore? That is if I uh, allow him to go free, absolutely. Uh, or if uh, I have a, an untimely death, yes, then, then the Mykonid would no longer be bound to me. But yes, he is still my captive. I guess nobody can really communicate with Stool. I found him in the Neverlight Grove. There's quite a few of those uh, small Mykonids there, and that is where, seeing that uh, no one else is uh, breaking the ice, so to speak, uh, yeah, that's where I am going, and that is where my companion Stool is going. We are going to the Neverlight Grove. And he says the, the Neverlight Grove is a little northwest of Sloob, he's of Sloob, and he goes, that uh, undesirable place stinks like crawfish and the other depths of the f the demons and fish of the sea. It's such a disgusting place to go, as he kind of tones it down a little bit, and ugh. Well, that's where we're, we're heading, and hopefully to the surface after that. Uh, you won't, you won't catch me dead. Uh, not in Sloob. No, not at all. Not me. Well, I will be traveling around. The way. Oh, well, I shall do as that. As far as we go. I will do that, and then I will travel east. And uh, he takes out his... Uh, he's got a map scrolled up as well. Let me um, give you guys... Uh, open up the map again for you guys. Now, good old... Uh, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Good old uh, Sarvan, Sarath, sorry. He talks about going right. Because <clears throat> you guys are, let me give you guys a a barrel too. Or a little, like a little blood spot. Kind of be able to tell where you guys are at on the map, right? You guys are about uh, about right here. You've gotten a little little ways away from, from Velkenvelve. Uh, but uh, Dark Elf, Sarath, he talks about uh, going the roundabout way uh, around the the long, basically the long chasm, and he's going to take the long way uh, to basically he's going to take the long chasm, loop back around Velkenvelve, and head to Neverlight Grove, which is west. But he says possibly uh, there's another alternative route to if I find uh, some type of boat uh, to acquire, I will probably go across the Dark Lake as well. So I have several different things that I can do, and there are two different two different paths I can take. Well, in Sloop, you'd be able to purchase a boat across Dark Lake, and once we get as once we get there, we haven't decided whether we're going to purchase one or not. But if we do decide to purchase one, we'll be more than welcome to travel together across the Dark Lake as well. Yeah, he, he... and there's a party. What's that? Can you? And there's a party happening. If you follow us, then we're gonna have a party. We're gonna drink and dance and have fun. A party? Where? Where is this? And he sounds a little snobby. That you know, Sarah does. This is a, a party. Where is this party going to happen? Uh, where your shark comes from? Sloop. Sloop Ladop. That. Oh, yes. I would not be caught dead there. And that's fishery. Uh, uh, not not I. I. I I will I will sit that party out. And is she's kinda sick of hearing from the sky, so she just kinda groans, rolls up her sleeves so you can see her tattoos all from her you know, wrist all the way up. Shakes her beard into her uh, backpack and and just rebraids her beard while singing Henry the Eighth I Am to herself. So is Henry the Eighth sort of like an old dwarvish king from one of the old dwarvish kingdoms? Yes. All right, gotcha. I like it. So yeah, as uh, you know, he's you guys are noticing the the route that he plans on taking. Sarah, so you guys are able to, to kind of mark the same etchings uh, on your map as well. Now, Sarah says his overall goal is to go back to Menzo, uh, Menzo Baranzon, which is basically where uh, uh, he wants to try to prove his innocence because he still swears that uh, 
he did not kill anyone. All right, so Menza Baron's on. We'll go ahead and unleash that from the map as well.